So the first one on the list is about making drums a bit fuller and it's called parallel drum compression. Listen to this though. It's a cool drum, but it's a bit thin, isn't it? Regular compression is simple. When you go above the threshold, we compress the signal and alter the shape of the attack and the decay. But it is not always what we want actually. On parallel drum compression, we use extreme settings on compression so that we really bring down the volume levels. And because settings are fast and extreme, we will have this initial super spiky attack left. And because this is a parallel compression, we actually sum up the original signal on top of the parallel signal, creating this really bulky fat signal. Parallel compression often starts with creating a parallel chain. And in the classic way, you will have your compression on the return channel and you will compress it pretty hard. This is a free compressor called Music Junior. Music Junior. And we're gonna go very extreme with the compression. Do you hear how it is really got compressed and start to pump? What I do oftentimes to color up even, even more, introducing additional saturation so that the, that compression gets even dirtier. And here I have the soft tube saturation knob. We're gonna go quite a bit aggressive here. Do you hear how all the dirt came out from the sound and everything became a bit more sausage-like, a bit more compressed? Let me show you visually this. Resample the return channel into a new channel here. If you take a closer look, this was exactly what we talked in the theory session, right? Those really compressed body, but a very transient hits at the beginning. I'm gonna turn this off now so that I can mix nicely together. I would also suggest adding a plate re reverb on top of this to glue everything up together. Let me peak match them and you can hear the difference a bit better. More in your face and more you're gonna get at the same time. And this takes us to the second one. The gated snare is getting extremely popular lately. Listen to this loop. So we have a lot of 80s synth wave sound, but the snare is not really reflecting the vibe in the track, right? First, getting a reverb, but we will create a double signal chain here. Click this one, create a new chain. The first one is actually with the dry one. Second one, we will call it the wet one. On the wet chain, we will have this huge reverb. Really open this up quite a bit like this and take off the spin, put it into high mode, reflect and diffuse quite a bit and decrease the size and stereo a bit as well. Something like this. Obviously you hear the problem straight ahead. It's just too big, right? Tail will mash up all the mix. Obviously we are not gonna use it this way. This is called gated snare technique because now we're gonna use a gate and we will control the gate with the source snare sound. If we go here, gate, sidechain, and sidechain to itself, snare, prefix. Now the gate will open when the snail hits and the gate will close when the duration of the snare ends. Without the gate, with the gate, the other thing that I like to do in this approach is actually getting a drive and controlling the color of the snare and splashing a bit more. This part you should arrange together with the loop so that you can hear a bit better where the snare sits perfectly. Because we are distorting a lot, we can actually decrease the even overall peak volume. I have a super short one minute video just I pub published a few days ago. I will put it here. Take a look if you're interested in making your snares more in your face. And together with the track. Yeah, cool, isn't it? This is another very spicy and very popular technique. Listen to this. To be honest, even this vocal is a bit auto-tuned, so you can definitely hear this over-controlled pitch, but we are going to exaggerate it. So I'm gonna use a motor pitch. The main idea is using extreme settings to really pin the vocals on the key of the track. In this case, we are on the F minor, F and minor here. Turn the speed all the way down. 
You see how fast it is trying to correct the pitch and then we are gonna go 100% wet. If you feel like it's too artificial you can play around. And then you are going to play around the formats to get this more robotic sound. And a bit four man shift. And good thing with this plugin is you also can actually add a bit width. I'm 100% sure you hear this type of vocals everywhere. But it doesn't end here. Once you are happy with all the auto tuning that you want to have, this type of vocals are also quite distorted. So what I'm going to do first introduce an overdrive. So something like this. It brings this newly added harmonics to the front and I'm gonna actually saturate a bit more again with the saturation knob. Something like this. And then we are gonna just slightly EQ this so that we can brighten up slightly. And this type of sounds because it's very continuous it's a good idea to give a bit pumping so a bit side chain to kick. Let's do an AB without. And this brings us to the next one. And the next very popular thing is reverse teller. If you don't know what teller is, I have a drop tier video here. Take a look at that. So we have this. And the drop comes, but we don't have anything mint bean, so we have to create a bit more expectation. It's just consolidated teller, in this case, something like this. I have my Diva preset pack over here and I have this very horny sound, sounds like this. It is perfect, but it is not on the right direction. We actually need to use that tail instead of the main sound. So what I'm going to do, just resample this to a new channel. So like this. But we're going to reverse this, something like this. It will create kind of real expectation and build up the ambience. So when the teller comes, we already expect it, kind of. But it's not ended there. We need to use a delay and reverb to make it even more authentic. So the first, a ping pong delay. And then, of course, a reverb on top of that. Like you know already, I like to drive it a bit more to make it a bit more aggressive. And, of course, cut to super lows. And all together... And this brings us to the last one. This one is my favorite and it's called Vox Ambiences. Take a listen to this loop. I have these dry vocals here to start with. Baby get lost in this moment Burning bright in the night sky a lot of things that we can use here. If you try to chop it manually, you can do it, but it gets a bit harder because you, it's really hard to know like which part of the vocals will sit to the track. But I tend to do just introduce a simpler. You can use any sampler that have a chopping mode in it. I'm gonna just drag and drop here. Slice this down with this button. Sometimes it's not perfect, like so you have to maybe decrease the sensitivity to arrange the cutting points. As you can see, the volume levels are pretty drastic. So it's like jumping up and down. That's the reason we should need a compressor to just even the things out so that we have a smoother sound. The levels are a bit more even. And then because we need an ambience, we have a, first a big reverb, a shimmer type of reverb to create the ambience. So very, very ambient. Not enough, we also need an echo or the delay to pan the things around a bit more. And at this stage, the only thing that you should do is just try to play around with the keyboard and try to find something that actually fits the vibe of the track. I 
I think that was quite nice. And the final thing is, because it's very sustained, you will again side change the kick. And altogether, sounds like this. <laughs>